Hey guys, it's Sam here and welcome back to another video. Now, today I'm going to be on the back of the transfer video that I did. I am going to be basically giving my top 5 players that I would want Liverpool to sign this summer. Uh, they don't, not all of them are going to be actual links, uh, some of them are just going to be uh, you know, a player that's just out there that I would love Liverpool to sign. Uh, they don't necessarily have to be linked with us uh, during the summer. So the uh, number five is one that I think a lot of people would like, and it's also one that I mentioned in the last video. But that is Ozan Kabak. Now, for me. Ozan Kabak is just a a, a given. Um, you know, it just it one of those logical signings that just makes sense. Uh, even though Kanate's come in, I, they'll just I think you you can't have enough centre backs is what I think. And if you take Ozan Kabak with Canate, Van Dijk, Gomez, Matic, then a Ben Davis, well, Reese Williams, Nat Phillips. It, it's a lot of centre backs, but it gives uh, it gives Jurgen Klopp and it gives Liverpool the options of change, um, which is very much needed, like resting players, as I think. Uh, we played uh, Lincoln in the early rounds of the League Cup and I think we beat them 7-2 was it? 7-1? 7-2? I think they got a second. don't remember the final scoreline but it was 7-something I think. And um, I'm pretty sure Virgil van Dijk played in that game and I think that you know, if you have Kabak in there, that's a game that you can rest Van Dijk in. You can have the night off and you can play, you know, Kabak and Canate, for instance. Or Kabak and Rich Williams. You know, it, it gives options and it also allows players like Van Dijk to have a break every now and then. Because I think that's one of the reasons why we had so many injuries last season was because simply it basically had a continuation on from the 2019-20 season uh, there wasn't basically any pre-season it wasn't like a proper pre-season and you basically just got straight back into the swing of things very quickly and you know Virgil van Dijk plays most of our games and you know you always want your star players playing every single game and I think that's why we got so many injuries because they were going on from last season putting so much effort into this season well to go again after winning the title um, yeah it just all of a sudden it all came crumbling down and everyone seemed to get injured Oh, I think definitely if you have Kabak in there, it strengthens the defence and it just gives options. At number four, I think that it would probably be a player that has only just been linked with us today as I record this July 5th. Uh, and that is Saul from Atletico Madrid. That would be an incredible signing. If we sign Saul as the Wijnaldum replacement, that would be incredible. Imagine having a midfield three of Fabinho, Thiago and Saul. Like that is, that's mental. That midfield is, is quite scary. And I'm already looking forward to the midfield three of 
Fabinho, Henderson and Thiago because we barely got to see that last season because Fabinho had to drop into centre back and then so did Henderson and they both got injured and then they came back into the team and I think they've got a couple of games in together in midfield but Wijnaldum was pretty much a a, uh, a guarantee in that uh, play so we barely got to see it and then Henderson got injured again and so we uh, we literally didn't really get to see that front uh, that midfield three so that is something I'm really looking forward to you add Sawal into that already having Curtis Jones Oxley Chamberlain Navigator and James Milner like that midfield is that is also a scary midfield and it would be incredible it'd be an incredible signing and I, I think the only problem is I think he would probably cost 50 60 million plus I don't know if FSG are willing to spend that amount of money uh, which sort of is a shame because that sort of really rules out big name signings um, when, you, when you look at FSG's track record especially with what they've been saying in recent months it, um, it doesn't really look like it's willing but you know what he's been linked and so who knows we'll we'll see as the summer progresses I guess uh, number three it is Octavio now we have is another player that we've been linked with that I mentioned in the last video and I just think it's again a, a given that we sign him um, especially if we are looking to sell Harry Wilson and Shaqiri uh, we definitely need strong cover for Mane and Salah especially as they're going off to the African Cup of Nations uh, we're gonna need some cover so that we're not sure and it just definitely makes sense to have a strong player like Lotavio come in he's got a lot of uh, got a lot of experience already with Porto yeah it's I think it's an, another player that is a given that we should go after number two is a player that I don't think we've been linked with or at least I haven't seen but it's a player that I think maybe we were linked with in the past but it's a player that is very very good in my opinion and that's Christian Pulisic of Chelsea I real again like I said we need cover for the wing Pulisic is a great great option to have stick him off, off, off the bench or you start him if you know, Mane is having a rough patch you know you can rest him I think that was the problem last season was the injury problems but then the fact that Firmino and Mane and even Salah at times were not at the levels they had been over the last couple of years and so the only problem was we didn't really have cover because the likes of Shikiri, Jota, they were all injured. And so, again, even when they are available, I feel like Jota's best at being as the striker and being the man that goes in behind uh, rather than a wide. So, we would need cover for the wides. And again, I just think Pulisic is a no-brainer, in my opinion. Yeah, he's very good, he has the experience in the Premier League. 
and also I did hear when um, when Thomas Tuchel first came in it seemed as if Polisic had was wasn't in his plans. There was rumours going around um, that Polisic wasn't part of Tuchel's plans. I don't know if those have changed. Don't follow Chelsea. Obviously, as a Liverpool fan, I couldn't care less about Chelsea, so I don't follow Chelsea at all. So I don't really know if there's Chelsea uh, news that sort of said that Pulisic is now with two shows plans or if those rumours weren't true I don't know but even so you know I think we should still go in for him and try and get him because he's a very very good player and he just beats up the forward position and the number one spot for me is a player that has been linked with a number of Premier League clubs this season, uh, this summer. He hasn't been linked with Liverpool though, but I think we should go in for him. It's Jack Grealish. For me, his talent is incredible. We're seeing it at the Euros when Gareth Southgate actually brings them off the bench. Um, you know, when he actually gets played, you know, he's getting assists, he's unlocking doors, he looks very good. His talent's there, and again, it gives options for the midfield. He can also play a part of the front three as well. Like versatility is what Jurgen Klopp looks for. At least that seems what he likes. He likes versatile players, and Jack really is one of them. Uh, he would be an incredible signing. It also like puts us. In a very strong position because nobody would know how we play because everyone pretty much knows how we play now we play a 4-3-3 with Firmino as like a false nine we play one, one CDM with two midfielders a bit further forward if you bring in Grealish there's a chance that you could play a 4-2-3-1 you play the 4-3-3 uh, you know, you can play all sorts of positions and you can change it mid-game. You can do that now anyway. With Thiago, we can play Thiago as a more advanced midfielder. Um, but if you add Grealish into that, that really spices up things. And I just think it would be a very incredible signing to have. It's just... The money again is seeming like it's going to be a hell of a lot of money, and like I mentioned before, I just don't think FSG are going to spend those kinds of money on just one player. They prefer to spend sort of 60, 70, 80 million on three or four different players rather than spending that money on one player, which I kind of get, but also. If, if they're very good, you could do it. And we've seen them do it anyway because they spent, was it 65 million for Rylison? But 75 million for Van Dyke? Yes, I know that that was recuperated from the sale of the 142 million, whatever it was, we got for Coutinho. I get that that's how they spend that sort of money. But also, I think that you know, we won the Champions League, the Super Cup, the Club World Cup and the Premier League. We will have gained a lot of money from those cup competitions. Yes, we didn't win anything last season, but still, FSG aren't a poor organization you know they are rich and they do have a lot of money it's just compared to Abramovich compared to the city owners we're nowhere near them we can't compete with them but we've shown that it doesn't matter that we don't have those kind of budgets that they do we can still compete with them in the league 
by overthrowing City and winning the title. Also proving that we can win the Champions League as well on a on a tight tight budget as you call it comparing to the other big clubs in the league and in the world really we're probably ones that don't really spend a hell of a lot which I I do know why obviously they said that it, you know their main goal is for stability they want everything to be stable they want Liverpool to be a stability thing you know they're not gonna go out and spend 200 million a season because then there is no stability that stability is not there they like to just keep the money coming in and only spending a few or like spending from selling players so it looks like again we're gonna have to do this season to buy players it's about selling them on selling the dead wood selling the fringe players to then sign and add to the squad is actually going to make the squad better which again makes sense but it's also like you know come on like throw the bone here like just just go full at it just go at it throw the money at these clubs shock the entire world and let's go and smack everyone up and win the Champions League the Premier League the FA Cup fuck it why not go and win the League Cup as well let's just win everything <laughs> uh, anyway that's been this video please leave a like if you enjoyed please subscribe I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.